on the heels of the Schumer Rounds Amendment potentially failing in Congress, or rather being destroyed in Congress by the UFO Control Group, is mainstream media putting out disinformation related to UFOs, putting out debunking articles. Well, that's what George Knapp is saying, so let's go over that and a bunch of other stuff today. It's time for another UFO News Roundup, so get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, please share on social media, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, let's just get right to it. Uh, George Knapp tweets, What a coincidence. Two mass media articles drop on the same day to assure us we don't need to worry about aliens. And here is one from the Rolling Stones that he links to. Aliens are out there, but they probably don't care about us. Science and astronomy are more and more pointing to the fact that there is other life out there. Here's why we haven't seen it yet. I'm not going to read the whole article, but let's just go over the pertinent part. Uh, yeah, they are trying to say... Intelligent life is probably far away, very far away. And uh, that's kind of the gist of the article. We might have missed the chance for first contact already. If aliens exist, we probably don't matter to them at all. Well, why are they abducting uh, hundreds of millions of people uh, by our best information? And again, you know, we need more information on that. But our best available information is the Roper poll done in the 90s by John Mack, Bud Hopkins, and David Jacobs, uh, with additional information supplied by David Jacobs later that suggests between 2 and 5% of the world populace are being regularly abducted by aliens or non-humans, beings, beings, other dimensionals, whatever they are. Uh, so we will probably first detect an advanced civilization through its trash, according to this article. So anyway, you get the idea. They're basically debunking the idea that beings are, uh, you know, uh, in uh, here in force in the numbers that we seem to be seeing them and talking about observing them through astronomy and SETI and stuff like that. Um, you know, they do at the end uh, throw out the idea that they might already be here and we just don't know. So I guess that's something, but in general, the article has a debunking tone to it. So uh, what does the other article say from the Washington Post? What we actually know about aliens, according to science. Uh, it came from space, hurtling at tremendous speed, a mystery object, reddish, rocky, shaped like a cigar. Its vo velocity was so extreme it had to have come from somewhere far away in the interstellar realm. Of course, they're talking about Uamua. Uh, it was an alien spacecraft. Uh, talking about SETI researchers. Again, basically taking the same angle uh, as the Rolling Stones article. Uh, looking at it from a mainstream conventional science. Um, UAPs and the renewed alien obsession. It's an obsession. Uh, yeah, it's not evidence. It's an obsession. So, yeah, again, I will link to the article and you can read it at your uh, uh, your leisure. But, yeah, you get the general idea is that these uh, mainstream articles uh, put out at the same time on the heels of the, the Schumer Rounds Amendment uh, very likely being uh, torpedoed or crippled in Congress. Um, you know, it, it seems fishy, doesn't it? It seems like a concerted effort uh, by the control group to put out a, a debunking a debunking Paul on the whole U, UFO issue. So, you know, um, let me know what you think. Are, is this disinformation? Is this a concerted effort at disinformation? Or is this just uh, reporters randomly and independently putting out the same sort of information about UFOs uh, on the heels of what is going on with the Schumer Rounds Amendment? In other, more exciting news, this article from the U.S. Sun uh, is talking about a great UFO case in the UK that we are now learning that the Ministry of Defense stepped in and tried to suppress, and there is new information about it. Uh, out of this world UFO case dubbed UK's Roswell, blown open by new evidence as expert reveals how aliens could be behind baffling mystery. The incident, which took place in January 1983, was dubbed the Welsh Roswell after the infamous UFO crash in New Mexico in 1947. After his shock find, Farmer Evans called uh, cops and a team of RAF men and plainclothes officers dubbed the Men in Black combed the land in nearby woods, taking away the fragments found. And here are some of the fragments. 
It says those pieces of debris were sent to labs in the USA and Australia. Uh, yeah, ancient aliens presenter and University of Chester lecturer Mark Olley ordered specialists a uh, test on remnants of the debris for his new book to mark the 40th anniversary of the incident Europe's Roswell and received mysterious results. And in a strange twist of fate, samples from the Welsh Roswell are strikingly similar to a piece of material recently recovered from Roswell, New Mexico, where a spacecraft is said to have crashed. Speaking about the incident, Mark from Warrington, Cheshire, told the Sun nobody saw it and nobody heard it. A farmer called Irwell got up the next day and went out to have a look at his sheep and he found debris scattered across four fields. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, UFO boffins claim one landed in a farmer's field in Wales. Now, yeah, a UFO boffin. I love it. I'm going to start calling myself a UFO boffin. Uh, yeah, so anyway, then the men in black, a local UFO investigator, Gary Rowe, then went down to the site to recover the debris. Uh, Mark said he had a look across the fields, but everything had gone. Because the night before, Irwin had phoned the police, who in turn had notified the local Ministry of Defense, which at that point was an Air Force base. They turned out with another agency, which looked like men in black, and spent all night clearing the site. Shocking, right? Shocking. By the time Gary got there, there didn't seem to be anything there. But being a bright chap, he thought, I bet they haven't managed to clear the woods. So he went and had a look at the woods, and sure enough, he got six pieces of metal and two pieces of a substance looking like foil. In a sinister twist, Gary claimed he was later visited by more mysterious men in black from an unknown government agency, of course, who asked him to hand over the debris, but he told them he no longer had it. After keeping his finds hidden for four decades, Gary gave Mark some of the debris to send off for testing while the, test, uh, while the rest remains locked up in a storage in a secret location. Mark sent the specimens to labs in Australia and the U.S., and was shocked when the results came through. The Australian lab came back and they said, yes, it's aluminium. I think I said aluminum earlier, but aluminium. Uh, but it's aluminium foam. We know exactly what this is. It's got some kind of American military grade glue on it. It's painted green on one side. American military grade glue. However, Nobody had aluminum foam in 1983, so they might think they know what it is, but clearly it shouldn't have existed at that point. Then the American analysis comes back and their conclusion just says, unknown. They said they had no idea what the origin of this is, but it's lanthanum, which is an extremely exotic, massively expensive, difficult to find, difficult to produce metal. So we got this idea that it's possibly, possibly aluminum foam, and it's lanthanum. If he built some kind of flying craft out of lanthanum, it would cost billions of dollars to produce that quantity of metal. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. So I will let you read the rest of the article on your, on your own, but there you go. We have a, a great case of a UFO crash that may be an American UFO, uh, maybe you know, ARV or reverse engineered UFO or uh, something. You know, Who knows? Who knows? But we do know that the control group has been flying these around for some time, uh, at least since the 60s. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, apparently this one crashed in the UK and was covered up by the Ministry of Defense. So let me know what you think about this story in the comments below. In other news, did you know there was a megalithic wall in North America, specifically in Montana? Well, that is what I learned the other day from the Bright Insight Show on YouTube. Great channel. Well, he had Mike Collins on of Wandering Wolf, uh, who explored and has done research on this fascinating uh, wall called the uh, Montana Sage Wall. Apparently, it's on private grounds, um, and it was only discovered about 20 years ago, and it's now open to tours and things. Uh, not a whole lot of research has been done on it, to my knowledge, uh, but it is fascinating. Uh, Mike is now telling us that they have done some LIDAR tests, or excuse me, some uh, underground, uh, deep ground penetrating radar tests on it, and have found that it extends 15 feet below the ground, and that there is a large foundation 
that it rests on, a flat surface that this rests on. And apparently there, uh, at one point, it seems like there were two parallel walls, but that the second one has collapsed more or less. There's still some remains of it uh, in a deteriorated uh, condition, uh, but there you go. Uh, there is some debate as to whether this could be a natural feature or not, but you know, you, you tell me what you think. Could that be a natural feature? Um, especially if it's sitting on a flat foundation and there's two parallel walls. So, uh, uh highly intriguing. Again, there's not a whole lot of research that has been done on this thing. So we don't know how old it is. It's likely thousands of years old. Uh, the only other megalithic uh, construction in North America that I can think of offhand is the Stone Chambers of New England that I have covered before. And there's also a place that is uh, probably built by the same culture called the uh, Stonehenge of, of America and uh, one of its names. Uh, a fascinating, uh, fascinating sequence of ruins. There are over 800 of these stone chambers in New England. And yeah, Google that. And there, there's small uh, dolmens, um, uh, highly intriguing uh, structures. We don't know who built them. Um, and the, uh, uh, the American Stonehenge, uh, they found some writing that might be Phoenician. So, you know, uh, the Native Americans of North America did not use megalithic construction that we know of. So who built these things? Who built these things? Um, either way, it is fascinating, fascinating, and I had never heard of this wall before, the uh, Sage Wall of Montana. And uh, go, I encourage you to go uh, watch the, uh, the full episode, and there's also some additional information on Rumble, and uh, our, our great episode of Bright Insight, so go, uh, go, go check it out to find out more about this amazing structure in Montana. Meanwhile, Dr. Robert Scheidt has some amazing new dragon images for us. This is awesome. Uh, Dr. Robert Scheidt is the one who found the uh, UAP uh, dragon uh, phenomenon, the subset of the UFO phenomenon, these little objects that appear to buzz any airborne object over 150 feet uh, per his research. And he's got a great channel, Custodian Files, where he's, uh, you know, uh, puts up his videos uh, of these amazing objects. Um, that uh, uh, can be captured by multiple cameras. They go behind distant objects so they're not bu bugs or birds. Although initially he thought they were probably dragonflies, so he called them dragons, uh, and the name kind of stuck. But here we go. We got uh, up close and personal pictures uh, in one inter interpolation of a dragon. Uh, these are two dragons. Uh, one was taken in 2023, one in 18. They look remarkably similar. Um, you can see that it's got these wing structures on there, that the dragon UFOs have these wings that come off of them. Um, and, you know, a lot of people think that's uh, proof that they're bugs or birds. But I'm, I'm, that's in my mind, there's no way that is a bug or a bird. Uh, but, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. But also, the, again, these, you know, as I've shown in previous videos, these tiny little UFOs will go behind distant objects like planes. Uh, and I've shown some of that uh, footage in previous videos, clearly showing they are not bugs or birds. Um, but they go so fast, they just zip across your field of vision. Uh, you, you barely even see them or you don't see them at all. Uh, Robert's able to capture them with uh, high frame rate cameras. Uh, you know, they'll be buzzing a helicopter and he'll be able to uh, take it frame by frame and make these interpolations like this one. And uh, so this is an interpolation of one object. You can see it moving across, um, you know, the, the field of uh, view here. I believe that it is in front of these wires. Uh, Robert thinks that they draw energy from power lines. But again, you can clearly see the wings sticking off of this and the wings are moving. But that, in my mind, again, is not a bug or a bird. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, check out that amazing uh, two side-by-side -side shots of uh, close-up views of dragon UFOs. That is amazing. So uh, yeah, so go check out Robert's channel, Custodian Files, and I'll, I'll put a link to it below. Last but not least is Joe Rogan flip-flopping on David Grush. Well, let's hear him out. 
take in. We David Grush is that UFO whistleblower mm-hmm. that testified in front of Congress. Yeah. It's hard to say, man. The thing about it is I believe he's telling the truth as far as what he's experienced and the documents that he uncovered and the people that he talked to. But how do you know whether or not they're just using him as a useful idiot to just get out some silly story mm-hmm. because they're covering up for the fact that there's some very advanced drone system that the United States government has that are trying to keep under wraps? Right. It might be Got both. To know. It, I, I think it's probably both things. You, well, here's the thing. Mm. You're out in the woods. Okay, I've already know. <laughs> but yeah, I think Roswell was an advanced drone system, according to Joe Rogan. Um, so, um, you know, it's disappointing to see Joe Rogan flip flop on this. He seems to vacillate depending on what guest he has on. Um, but yeah, he is clearly ambivalent about the David Grush information. Um, you know, he's also in the past, you know, been very doubtful and skeptical of the Skinwalker Ranch, uh, story. So, uh, you know, but at least he's talking about it and he is interviewing people. So he is doing net positive on the subject. But overall, a very disappointing take, especially seeing those articles and, uh, you know, with the Schumer Amendment in such trouble, it all seems, well, I don't, you know, I, I don't think that he's part of the program or been co-opted by it in any way or corrupted by it. But it, it is it is not a great pattern, let us say. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be not notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, please consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt. See the merch store below or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos to check out on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.